welcome to a new episode of Eyes of Style from Eyes of Fashion. Today, I am here with a friend, mentor, colleague, Lisa Ton. She is one of the most accomplished designers from Puerto Rico. She has a very interesting story, and we're going to learn everything about what she does. Hello, Lisa. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. I am so happy to be with you. Oh, no, you. thank you for having me here. And to talk about how you got to where you are, how you started. So tell us, how did your career start? Okay, well, um, since little, I was very interested in art. So I took um, art classes with well-known um, um, artists here in Puerto Rico. And I thought I was going to be an architect until I got uh, to senior year, in which mm -hmm. I really decided that mathematics for me were not the, my best. So I, I knew how to sew because my mother and her mother and all her sisters were sewers. So I just decided in my senior year, well, I'm going to mix both of them, the sewing part from my mom and the art classes I have taken all my life. And I just decided to go through fashion design. And that was, when did you do that? Uh, when, when, I, when I just graduated from high school, I went to um, the Escuela de Diseños en Altos de Chabón in Dominican Republic. Oh, yes, yes. That's where I started my um, associate degree. Then I went to Parsons School of Design in New York, and then I finished there my bachelor's degree. And then I went to Paris, and I took some graduate studies. Um, so, yeah, fashion has been my life for the past 30 years, but all, but all started with art because I love to draw and paint and because I know how to sew since I was little because of my mother. Oh, that's, that's amazing. I, I, my, in my family, all of the women, uh, also sew, but I am, I am a disaster <laughs> for the God of God. It was, it's hard. Well, like, my sisters are disasters too, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you were in Paris, what's the, the thing that you enjoyed the most or something that just like you kept with you through all these years? Well, the first part was that I got there at night and um, it was very funny because um, some of the students from the university from other countries were the ones who were, uh, say, the welcoming and were, what, were helping us to move to the buildings. And um, the guys who moved me were from Tunisia, which oh. I didn't know by that at that time where, where that was placed in the map. Yes. But they... I know everything about Puerto Rico, so I feel so embarrassed. I was like, oh, my God, I don't even know where they live or they, where they come from. But um, the, the, the country of Alaya. Yes. Then the next morning, that was in the 90s, so the next morning, um, I really got to see the, the, the settings, the environment. It was beautiful. It, the, the, everything looked like a postcard. Mm -hmm. Everything was clean and plants. Everything was so beautiful. So, yeah, I think... France um, taught me how to taught myself too, because uh, when I went there, I found myself um, with students that were very um, beginning in the, in the industry, were really beginners. So my teacher said like, oh no, I think you could be our co-teacher since you come from Parsons and you know, I, I, you know most of uh, your time you have been drawing all your life, so you could help us out. And I used to help in the drawing and design classes, but um, I taught myself how to draw in markers because when I studied, it was only gouache. We, mm -hmm. So that's why I love watercolor because that, that's all I took. I learned a lot about marketing. Yeah, we have some fashion uh, marketing and merchandising classes. I had to visit the ateliers, the stores, and that was the, the part that I loved the most because um, I was very fresh on that. I come from a very artistic background, not the entrepreneurship or the marketing thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it was my first um, connection to the real industry, more yeah. than the artistic part. Do you remember um, the 90s? Like, um, was it like anything in like a time close to any of the fashion weeks or... No, I used to, I, I really had the opportunity to go to the um, textile show mm -hmm. and um, it was like the time for Isi Miyake who just yeah. died. He was very famous during that time. So I used to go and, and, and see the windows and everything you know, on the streets. So 
Um, I think it was a very different industry than we, what we have today. Yeah. Um, but I learned a lot from, you know, having trouble with the language too. Mm. I took French classes before leaving, but it was like nothing compared to really no. living there and having to speak the language. So it I've was, been there eight years and I'm still not bilingual. No, no, no. It, it was fun. But yes, I learned a lot about the marketing aspect. Yeah, I think that was uh, the best part of it. And what about the city of New York? Well, that's still my homeland too. That's yes. where that's where my dad was born. So, oh. so for me, it's like um, going back to my dad's um, uh, place. So, New York, I, I go every year. You know, I love going and visiting better than living there. Hundred <laughs> percent agree. Hundred percent. Yeah, it was hard. I was a um, an unwed mom, a single mom with a real, real, um, really small girl, and it was tough for me studying there and living there. But I loved because, um, I love it because it's a place that um, there's always something new to see, and the industry there has suffered a lot too. There's mm -hmm. not the same businesses that were, many of them are closed right now, but we still have the fashion sense and, you know, the, the people trying to make um, their, Yeah, their success in the industry. So, yes, I love New York. I'm I'm going very very soon in October with a bunch of kids from here from Puerto Rico. Our students, some of them have never been there. So, oh wow, it's a magical place for me. For me, it's like going to Disney. So I I yeah agree. The energy as soon as you see those buildings, and you start to enter Midtown and and Garment District and everything else, the energy that just flows through my body. I I re I remember going back, and I still feel it. Oh just, yeah, and I will feel it all my life because I was the first Puerto Rican to be able to present in New York Fashion Week. Oh, so it was two thousand and seven, and um, it's like I always go there, and it's a dream, and you know, I had and the, the dream that came true to me. Yes, so it was an honor to represent Puerto Rico. So we'll, we'll get to that. But after Paris, did you return to Puerto Rico? I came back to Puerto Rico. I was already married, and okay. I had three kids. So okay. life has changed. <laughs> <laughs> I came back, yes, and I started. I started my own line, but at the same time, I started to give classes. I always thought I needed to have, like, um, this secure income. Uh, Every month, so I just started to be um, a teacher. I opened my own school in 1996, so I've been doing that uh, since 1991. Since 1991? Yes. yes. You opened your own school, and now basically gen four generations, you, you, are, you were the only school of design that we had. Well, I, I think it was not, not not the only one, but yeah, but the one that was sounding, you know, the most uh, common one because... Yeah, I just gave my life through it. I, I, I used to go to my school seven days a week. I wanted it to be successful and I wanted to be um, help the students that couldn't leave Puerto Rico to study this in abroad. So yeah. I was the responsible one for them to be to have the information to for them to be able to work here. Yeah, without having the opportunity of study abroad. Yeah, I think I think that's that's important, you know, especially in Puerto Rico to be able to provide those that education to the designers here so they can also then discover what they want to do and maybe yeah they'll travel at some point out of the island and, and keep on with the career but to be here and and give back and 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 just prepare all this new generation of designers i think that's like remarkable that you do that and when you decided to go to new york fashion week like why did you say okay i'm gonna go to new york what, what was that oh i think it was a dream to be you know, shoes because when it's, it's not the same industry now now yeah. if you have the money you just pay and then do the show where you, you want to do it but then it was just the main event is um new york fashion week had an organization where you have to like um Um, do the um, admissions process. Mm -hmm. I, you had to be a, a well-known and recognized designer for the past five years in your country. You had to have at least from two or three collections a year without stopping to present them all the, the coverage from your background as, a, as an, a designer and how well-known you were in your country. And then you do the admissions process. And then if you get picked, then they will choose the day or the time they want to give you. Okay. And it was something I was, I, yeah, I, I laughed a lot because 
Um, it was a, a it, my sh my first show there was a Friday at noon, and I said, "Oh my God, how we're we gonna do the after party so early? <laughs> we have to do the after party really late in the afternoon." But yeah, it was an honor for me. I had the opportunity to be the first one, and I did that for three years. And there's, oh, you did it for three years, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did it for three years, and it changed from Mercedes Benz to mm -hmm. um, I, I think it was like a camera name maybe it was a Nikon or something mm -hmm. um name and then it, it disappeared because you don't have that organization anymore yeah. now you do shows wherever now every every it. corner of New York has yes, a show yes yeah. but that was the time that was very organized yeah. I had to take um like a class in Brian to Park be able. and Lincoln and yeah yes I did in Brian Park at the first time and then I had to take their um a class with them they gave me a catalog they explained what the procedures were I had to hire my PR and everything in New York. Okay. And then they told me, like, your clothes will be here the, um, the, the, the night after, or no, the night before, or the morning earlier. And if you're not here, the show will go on. I want you to know that. Okay. Uh, you cannot be late. <laughs> you have to be prepared. So it was, you know, it was very, it was a, a very, very fun for us to do something different, very, very well organized. Mm -hmm. Not a, a screaming, mm -hmm. everyone was there ready. And it helped me a lot because um, it was, um, there was a controversial theme about the waiting models in Europe that, that year. And CNN came back backstage in my show and they were like um, trying to see how, how many pounds they were, all of them. And they, they, they do interviews and all that. And I have the PETA people backstage too. No. So it was a lot of um, uh, action before the show. But yeah, it was it was great. Did you bring models from Puerto Rico? They would. Yeah, I, I took uh, for the first show. I took most of the of the Puerto Rican girls. Okay. Travel with me. For the second one and the third one, I just used some of them from here and some of them from there. Yeah. Okay. Now that I that must have been amazing just to be in New York and 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 see oh, yes. your show. Yes. Did the you thing. looking back at it? You you still think that that was something that definitely like helped your brand. Of and, course, yeah. of course. No, they, and, and they respect you more too. Yeah. Like it's like when you come back to your island, you know, like people are, oh no, she was the one who was in New York Fashion Week. Yeah, I think it, it helped me and um, it gave me the inspiration to, you know, keep on, on going. It, it was hard managing as a woman and with your kids and, and a husband and all that things happening at the same time. But yeah, it was a very important um, part of my life, I think. It helped me realize that all the sacrifice as a student, and it was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I it, those. It's interesting that those when those opportunities come about, and how do you say, do I do it? I mean, it's a big investment. It's a big entourage that you have to build. It, it's but it's at the end of the day, it's something that you know we all have to do, and because it will help us in the future of our career. Um, so going back to the school. When you when you launched the school, you established the school. You have created like many great designers from your school, like Ecliptica and Miriam Boudet and I don't know who. who and your man Nadal, who's Nadal. right there in the hallway. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's giving a present. Hey, so I mean, do you, how how do you? Because I feel we've spoken a little bit about this, and I it's very important that relationship that you are educator teacher. But you're also a designer, but then there's a line that you just kind of have to put in between, you know, you you having that responsibility as a mentor, as an educator, that you don't see the designers that are, you know, coming up after you as competition or anything like that. That you just you it's part of your job to to build them, to transform them into the designers that they are now. And that has nothing to do with the designer that you are. No, it's just like When I started doing both things, which I have done for more than 30 years, both things, um, the designing part was almost like 80% and 20% was just teaching. Then it, all of a sudden, when I opened my own school, five years after I was just giving classes at the uh, university in Ponce, mm. I decided to open my, my own school and then it changed it like to half and half, 50% teaching, 50% designing. Um, right now in 2022, it's like the opposite. I think it's 70% or more is teaching, 
-hmm. and then the 30% will be designing. I don't take uh, almost none of new clients. I just um, still design for the old ones mm -hmm. and they grow. But I, I have them like for the junior proms and then for the senior proms and then for the weddings. And then, you know, I do the whole thing, family thing. Um, but I, I still do like small collections twice or three times a year, okay. which I enjoy too. And when I have the opportunity to uh, go to other countries and they invite me, like, okay, yeah, let's go. So I've been traveling from Dominican Republic to Spain, to Panama, um, to St. Kitts, even to little islands. I've been Colom in Colombia presenting our collection. So when I have that opportunity, I just design a collection for the place I'm going. And I enjoy just having the opportunity to do it. I think that that's wonderful I, I in, that you are able to, like, do what you love, you know, still be able to design, do your collections, but also, you know, all of your passion, which is like educating other people to, to be in the arts, be a designer, you know, those things. So I think uh, it's, it's a blessing that some of us can still do what we, you know, what we want to do, like what, that what we love us. doing. Yes. Yeah. What that, we love doing. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's really wonderful. And come now that in, in terms of, you know, art, fashion, and collections and all about that how what do you like what do you say is important that your students understand in terms of business like you know having it's a great that you are talented that you are a great designer that you're a great seamstress that you 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 have, you have the technical background but then what what do you teach them about building a business that you know that's something that is important and sometimes it's hard for designers to launch their careers any art related careers they, they all the parents most of them will say like oh you're not gonna live from that oh you're gonna you know that's not gonna be money enough for you to raise your children or whatever whatever it takes but um from my experience you know my part i can, i come from uh, a father who was an entrepreneurship too and he was a successful man so I, I I was raised doing, uh, Around that. you know, the, having that business uh, thought in my mind all the time and thinking about what, what I'm going to spend. I'm going to be return, having the return for this, what to buy, in, in what price. I was re very concerned from the start. But, you know, you, you really get the experience through the years. But what I tell my students is the first thing is that they have to do it through their own story and they have to tell a story. So... For, for them to be able to um, work in Puerto Rico, which is a small item with a lot of talented people, a lot of designers, they have to have their creativity um, based on their own story too. Yeah. So um, it has to be, it has to come from their background, their own experiences. And they have to learn a lot, a lot about um, their textiles they choose, um, what to do with, with which textiles, is it um, really something you could do for a collection or you should do it then for a client which is able you know to is going to willing to pay you more and i try to s stay in a budget i always have like this business plan in which okay this show is going to be mostly um swimwear because uh i think it's more for the for the thing we're doing and then we choose the, the fabrics and then we do the the rest of it based on the main idea But I, I think for them it's very important to know how to do everything because if they start their own businesses, having to have somebody to cut, somebody to sew, somebody to do part of making, it's like you're not going to get money from it. Okay, so I, I just tell them they have to learn every, all the steps in the technical part. And then when they gr grow, they will then have the money to like pay somebody else to do something but you do just to make the business grow. But... Uh, there's no way to start a business without a, a, a very good business plan and a budget. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to stay with the budget and I try to learn, you know, to teach them how to make this um, maybe like a cheap fabric. doesn't look that cheap if you do something special to that, if you even dye in it or even um, um, pleat in it. Or, you know, or yeah, yeah, you can do something that it will look better um, and stay in your budget because... You don't want to do shows in, without without selling the clothes because we we do sell our our samples here. It's not like we do shows uh, used to do in the '90s, where there was orders made from there. Yeah, the orders are less and less this um, this time. So we just try to sell the samples too, and you just try to 
make it something that could fit more than one person, try to do like a one size pieces too. And yeah, it's, it's just like get organized. Yes, I think you have to have the team around you when you grow uh, to let you know those things. Like I, I don't design alone. I do the sketches and then we get to meetings and I present them and then they will choose some of them and, and the, those who I like or which I like and they don't like, I don't end up doing them. Because then I just try to have the opinion of the mass. So my coworkers are my mass. Okay. <laughs> so I just try to like, yeah, it's a teamwork. I just try to uh, teach them how to uh, work as a team and get even your sister's opinion or your mom's opinion is important because it gets out of, you know, out of, from another point of view. Yeah. And it's important to uh, listen to other people's um, opinions, too. Okay. I, yeah, I think that's interesting. And talking about your team, how many people are in your team, more or less? Well, we have been, uh, we were big, like, 22 when I used to present and live mostly from designing. Yeah. Now, um, we are actually, like, 12. Oh, okay. But I do use other um, workshops that I uh, pay for them to do same things for me. So it's not like they're all, they're not all full-time jobs. Okay. So it depends on if you're doing a big collection. And yes. By the time. And I, I've, I've seen that um, you do some of your graphic prints, you translate them into um, the fabric. And you, you, do, you do beautiful scarves with that. I, I, I find it fascinating, this thing about using art, what, if it's yours, not yours, you know, graphic design and translate it into a fabric that then you can, you know, not just go into a fabric store and, and buy fabric that is already there for you to pick from, yeah. but something that you actually created. Yeah, and then you make it yours. Your designs are, are your prints are your own prints. We have the machinery. We do it now. We print chiffons, we print charmeuse, we print lycra. So I, I even did the swimwear with my monograms um, by myself. So I, it's like, yeah, it, it makes you, um, it's unique yeah. for your line. It's good for your branding that people yeah. recognize your, your logos and your monograms. And yeah, I enjoy that, that part too. I think everything has to have at least one, at least one print that is done for you in the collection. We will make you very um, exclusive too. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I love that it, because it just, it, it, it makes the line, you know, so interesting. And also just the fact that it's your design that you are translating into the fabric. I, I, yeah, all the one, it makes it one of a kind because yeah. you're the one who's doing it. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I love that. And that's obviously something that, you know, as, this, as a designer, I also think about, uh, you know, how can I do that? What products? So I think it's something and it's something that is evolving now into digital fashion. Yes. So I would like to get your thoughts about digital fashion and, and what, where do you think that's going and what did you do with your students currently with that? Okay, I think the, the pandemic also has helped digital fashion to really become uh, very important. Um, now I, 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 told my, I tell my students, you can even work from your computer and sell the whole world. Um, it's like technology that I didn't have when I studied because I graduated in 1991 and they were not even born. Um, so, I was already a teacher. I was just telling this morning one of the kids that uh, he's a designer for the past 10 years that he, I graduated and he was not even born. So um, digital is like, um, it's a really, let's see, a fast growing business. I think it's going to stay there forever. I think the experience of the pandemic has left people with the idea that they can do everything from their home mm -hmm. and it, it becomes um, a, a tool very important for the kids to manage and to get themselves to know because they can do everything from their own Instagram, from their own web pages and sell all over the world. So I think digital fashion will stay forever. <laughs> But you told me earlier that your students start first Learning how to draw, yes, like the by old hand. way, by, by hand. hand. Yes, because that's where I came from, and I think they will have their own um, style. You know, when when they do define the, their art, because they learned it by hand first. So yes, they take the first two years. It's everything by hand. They do learn how to use watercolors and um, markers, and then they go digital 
and they do beautiful things, but they do know how to do it without the iPad. <laughs> they don't the need, iPad. Yes, yeah. without it. So they know both ways. Okay. And then using the iPad for them and the Procreate programs. Procreate, and all that, yeah. Yeah, those are well managed because they already know how to, how to use their hands. It's not the same to learn how to do a line with a, a thick line and a, a thin line with your hand. You know, an iPad is not the same if you know how to do it by hand. So... Yes, they do have their own way of, of drawing and illustrating, and I love it, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think I find it fascinating, the, the idea of digital fashion and wearables and all the uses that are going to start to come. And, and also, there's this debate that could, it, could that help in the long run with the situation of the climate and the overproduction in the yes. terms of if, if companies, especially big brands that really care about the bottom line, if they start to see that there's a good amount of money that's coming from digital fashion, then they'll be incentivized to produce less. Yeah, and they, and they do save money too, because I've, I, I saw shows that were sold, completely sold out just by a, um, a digital show, and there was no models. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't have to yeah. pay a whole production either. Yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, I think it's going to be saving the planet and saving, the, saving their industries too. Yeah, I, 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 am, I can't wait to see, you know, how would that evolve? Um, obviously, we're already seeing the metaverse fashion shows, yes. the metaverse um, social gatherings. Uh, we and Ice of Fashion create wearables for our holders to go into those social events. Yes. Um, like dresses and, you know, the eyes and all those things. Um, I, I also am very interested because I think the metaverse still has a few years to go or until we actually want to be there more than just for special events, like to see a fashion show or to have like a little um, party. But I, I feel what's coming also, which it started a few years ago with the filters in Instagram and Snapchat, you know, all those um, wearables that are going to be now, you can use them for your meetings, for your phone calls, for your videos in social media. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those things are digital digital fashion and, and designers can now um, experiment with those and, and start to make a mix, which is called digital, into, you know, selling a product that could be physical, but it also comes with a digital version so you can use it also. And, no, and, and it defines more the, the age gap between cons consumers. It's like um, there will still be people in my age and, 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 and older that will prefer the have, to have the experience maybe to go to a store when they can do it yeah. and live the experience. But there will be many young people that will do everything but in their computers that they, they don't care to go anywhere. They just right. want to enjoy it. And... Um, it's it's a very um, let's see it's a very uh, creative way. Um, I think it's gonna still take a little bit more of the acceptance, but yeah, it's it, it already has their own customers and and their own um, ex success in business too. So it's it will be a lot of more creative things coming. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely it's an opportunity. Uh, I feel that um, it, I don't know. I am I am so. I can't wait for that. I, I also, sometimes I wish, oh my God, I want to be younger and just like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and go back and have the way they're, they're living now, they're studying now. Yeah. yeah. But you know, um, at least in fashion, to learn to like sew and do the patterns and all that, yeah. it's very hard to do it like online. The truth is that there is no, not recognized, you, there's no recognized university in fashion design that does, does courses by online only. It's yeah. like maybe some classes will be easier to teach, but not, not the technical part. So I, I wish the combination of both could stay. Right. I was one of the uh, professors who thought that fashion design could never be online and the pandemic taught us that we could really do it. Um, and we had to do it because it was just like from Sunday to Monday, we had to do all the classes online. And I was the first one who said like, wow, how I'm going to be teaching illustration for people that are really starting in this business. It was very hard, but we, we managed to do it. We, we do the videos and yeah, I like do most of my meetings now by Teams, so I'm used to it. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather do everything uh, on, on the computer now. And, and brings me to your new masterclass, 
Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit of what you're doing? Uh, yes, what? I wanted to, after 30 years in the industry, I wanted to start, like, before I forget, <laughs> start um, saving and, and recording my own, my own experiences for the, for the past three and a something decades. And uh, I was going to record myself in master classes, and then I decided why not do it live and answer the questions that people have or anything they want to say. So I decided to do these 10 themes that include things from my experiences um, that are different themes and then that people can take the, the two hour course and they, they have, can do the questions they want to make. So it's most of a, I think it's the most important part of it is just to save my memories. It's part mm -hmm. of what I want to like keep when I'm not here. And I will be retiring like you know, some, not soon, but some, someday, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so I just want to save every memory I had for the past 33 years right now. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to keep the legacy. Yeah, know. and I had the opportunity to do it like uh, as a woman too, in a different way. Because I was a mom mm -hmm. and I'm a grandma now. And it's like how, I even explain like women in design that they feel very um, sad because they cannot do both things the, the 100% time. And I say like when kids grow up, they will learn and they will um, respect the days. I was not maybe late in, a, in, in one of the events <laughs> because I had to do something from my job, but um, they will learn to respect the sacrifice mm -hmm. because you have to sacrifice no matter what. You know, you cannot do both things the whole time. And yeah, it's it's been a whole a hell of a road, and I wanted to <laughs> let, uh, to just have uh, the memories to share, and especially the first one was about the inspiration. Um, and there's gonna be themes like um, where to buy, where to get the suppliers, where to get uh, the supplies in Puerto Rico, which we don't we don't produce anything. Um, how to get um, collaborate with other people. It's just the things that I did that I they were very successful in my life. I did a lot of collaboration with brands that had nothing to do with fashion and I made it in a fashionable way mm -hmm. and it gave me money to present everywhere I wanted to travel. So yeah, um, I just try to, um, I'm going to just try to have fun doing it, leaving it in, in a, you know, in a, in a record and just sharing it with people that are interested, not only in the fashion industry, and most of them were not in, even students. They were like, um, women who wanted to um, know about how, how I made it through the years, being a mom and a, and a professional, and people who are really uh, following, not because of the fashion, because of other things, like mm -hmm. because of wine or coffee or things I like, um, a lifestyle that I enjoy in a, in a very uh, humble way. So mm -hmm. I like to be accessible, and um, this is the way to be, like, you know, to be accessible to people when you're alive and you can talk to each other. Yeah. No, I, 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 and I can, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a witness to all of this because even with me, you have been so gracious and I like that you never say no and you're always there to, you know, for, for, for your students, for your colleagues, you know, for your family. So I, I think that, um, you know, you have a very, very beautiful career that, you know, that you have done and you should be very proud of what you have done. And I'm sure your thank family you, is super, super you. proud in Puerto yeah, Rico. Yes, they are, they are, they are. And I still dream about doing new things. Uh, I want to have a makeup line with my daughters. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have enjoyed the whole process, even doing the perfumes, doing candles. It's like a, a wide variety of things that uh, I have learned to experience um, from the good and the bad. And not all of them have been successfully, uh, maybe in a, in a monetary way, but it has been a different kind of success. So it's growing from everything. It's learning. It's just like um, having the opportunity to live it. And and just be there for my family too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's important and and yeah, I mean you have been you you're very have been very blessed that you've been able to do everything that you want. Sometimes it's not that easy, and we sacrifice a lot, especially being moms. And I I now on my second life career, I, yes. I, I'm experiencing that. Yes. It's not that easy. But uh, I, I think we can. I mean, going. the third one or fourth one, yeah. I think yeah. It's the fourth one, because now I, I can have the flexibility to say, like, none of them live with me. 
um, so I'm married and everything, but um, I have now the time to do new things that mm. I couldn't do before, like accepting things that come like last minute yeah. and, and do different projects. Yes, we have um, a trip to uh, New York in October. We have a trip to Missouri, which we will have an exchange program there in January. Why um, are you coming to Paris? Yeah, that was in our plan too. It will, it will come, it will come. But yeah, we have that experience for kids now. So I'm, I'm traveling with different groups. And then, yes, I'll be presenting now in, in Denver, in Colorado. I have never yeah. done a fashion show there. But the venue was very interesting. And I'd say like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to aspire in the collection of that venue where you're going to have that week. So it's a lot of, of things going. Yeah, the Revelación Modac, which is a, a reality show here. And yeah, we always have students who represent um, the university. That's kind of like and, the Project Runway of Puerto Rico. Yeah, and I have students here presenting in San Juan Moda and, and in the West Fashion Week. And mm -hmm. there's some of them are dressing um, syndrome kids from a, from a foundation here, which they have a show in September too, only with special kids modeling. So we, are, we try to do whatever we can do just to make life better for others too. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for your time. And it has been really nice learning about your career and what you have done and what you continue to do for your students. So I'll be posting some of the information about Lisa Tone, all of her website, so you can see all her creations and her upcoming master classes as well. So thank you so much. I'm so happy to have a, share this moment with you. Thanks to you. Mm -hmm. You're very welcome.